chance you need to come into these camp meetings because the Spirit of God moves, and God wants us to go to another level. The Bible said in Psalms 84, 11, He said, He will he will be a sun and a shield to us, and no good thing will He withhold from those that are walking upright. And He, Almighty God, will give us present-day favor, future glory, honor, splendor, and heavenly bliss. I don't know about you, but I want to go higher with God. And I know you do, too. You wouldn't be watching a video like this, listening to uh, two guys talking about the grace of God and the goodness of God. But I am telling you, this is not a time to be dull and dumb in the Word of God. We need to know the things that God wants us to do. And here it is. Uh, it says in the book of Amos, Amos 3, 7. Amos 3, 7 says, surely, means absolutely, God will not do anything without first telling his prophets what he's going to do. And so it's very imperative that we don't shun the prophets because the new move of God will be brought into existence by the prophetic word. That's what the Bible said in I, the book of Isaiah. But I'm delighted to be here, and I enjoy the things of God, and what a day to be alive. I want you to know this. God is up to something. And here, here's what we got to do. Uh, the shepherd's rod for 28, this, this October, will be my 28th year to receive a visitation from Jesus. And he tells me something that's going to happen in the future. And I write in the book called The Shepherd's Rod. You can look on our webpage, www.bobbyconnor. Look on our bookstore. There they are. There's the shepherd's rods. And we prophesied. You write them a year in advance from the year that you're in. And uh, I wrote about the pandemic. I said, we're going to have a, a pandemic. It'll be very contagious. And But I said, it'll be a shake-up for a wake-up to get us to embrace a greater glory. And so that's what we got to do. And the shepherd's rod for this year, 2022, uh, it, here's what it says. It, it says, you will show me the pathway of life. And in your presence, there is fullness of joy. At your right hand, there are pleasures forevermore. And here's, here's how he, the Lord spoke to me. He said, what are your plans to bring the church from just simply surviving to divinely thriving? I thought, I don't think I have a plan. And then so I'm waiting. I was stunned by the question. What is your plan to bring the church from just simply surviving to divinely thriving? And I'm thinking, and then here's what I said. I, my plan is to wait for God to show me what his plan is, and uh, that's what happens. So the, the, here's what God wants you to do. He, he wants you to really get into the Word of God and let the Word of God get into you. God said, I wish above all things that you would prosper and be in health even as your soul prospers. This is not a time to get busy and, and not, not be seeking the Lord. Uh, listen, Romans, the Bible says here in Romans 13, 11, that knowing what a critical hour this is, how it's high time now to wake out of sleep cast off the works of darkness, rouse to reality. And that's what I want this program to be about, really rousing to reality. Uh, get out of a fantasy world and realize we are in a war for our nations, and we've got to really take a stand for Jesus. Wow. Yeah, and I, I think, uh, you know, that's some something you've been really feeling on your heart. Now, I wanted to ask you a little bit um, to, like, you know, God has shown you a lot of things yes. that have come to pass. And, you know, one of which, which I think is, you know, a lot of people want to know, okay, Lord, what's happening uh, with Russia and Ukraine? Yeah. And so I remember you and I, we talked yeah. about, you know, prophetic word you gave years ago. 2009. Yeah. 2009, I had a visitation from Jesus Christ, and uh, it starts in a uh, uh, trance. I see a, a big old bear come out of a cave. And he's mad and he's vicious looking, but he, it, 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 he was wanting to start a war. And I said, Lord, what is that? He said, that's Russia, the Russia bear. And he said, he's going to try to manipulate the oil flow and start a war between, the Ukraine, between Ukraine. And that was 2009. And we prophesied about it and it's come to pass. But that's what God said. I won't do anything without first revealing what I'm going to do to servants of prophets. And we need that. We really need to be have heads up so we won't go, what's going on? I'll tell you what's going on. Uh, the Lord is going to show himself strong and mighty in battle. But uh, And he's already declared that we are more than conquerors. First John 4, 4 says, greater is he that is within you than he that is in the world. We're more than victorious. And I'm seeing so many people, Pastor, it seems like they've got a, a, a a victim mentality. Oh, brother, you don't know what I'm going through. The key is through. Yea, thou walk through the valley of the shadow of death, and God will get us through. 
he, the Bible said he's a friend that sticks closer than a brother. But uh, what's coming up now is what people want to know. Uh, they, they can see the news about the war. They can hear all of this. What is God doing? God is awakening, awakening an army. Here's what it says in the book of Daniel. It said, it is time to arise, you princes, and oil the shields because the deadly foe is at the gate. Isn't that amazing? So, okay, so on that topic then, you, you feel um, that God is doing something in the midst of this, but do you also see it um, escalating? Like, you know, so sometimes we hear about, let's say, China and, you know, Taiwan and different things like that, or, you know, where, where is it going with the oil and all these yeah. types of things? Like, do you think we've hit kind of a peak in the war or maybe there's coming a ceasefire or, or is it going to get a lot worse? I guess a lot of people are wondering. Yeah. The, the devil's plan is to kill as many people as he can cause, to cause as much destruction as he can. And I'm telling you, uh, the, China's not playing. Russia's not playing. Iran's not pray, uh, playing. This is serious times. Thus, knowing what a critical hour this is, church, it's time to wake up. God, God's not going to change this from some political office. He's going to change the affairs of the world through the church. You're, you're the people of God. Genesis 126, God says, let us make man in our own image, and let's give man kingdom control. That's talking about the saints of the Most High God. And we have got to really start praying. And uh, I think that God has laid out the process all along. Second Corinthians, Second Chronicles 7, uh, 14. If my people, which are called by my name, will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then, then I will hear from heaven. Then I will forgive their sin and heal their land. And that's what we got to do. That We hold the key to this thing by living pure and clean and holy. And that's what God's asking of the saints of God. Come out from among the world and be separate and touch not the unclean thing. And he said, you'll be my sons and daughters, declares the Lord God Almighty. But we are in serious, sobering times. These guys that have their hand on nuclear, uh, listen, they're not playing. This is not some kind of game. And uh, I think, I think I'm speaking the truth when I say we have in our nations some of the most enabled uh, leaders. I, I don't think you could find anybody that's uh, less equipped to handle the situations we're, we're facing than what's in. Listen, uh, we have got to wake up and realize we need help. We need divine intervention. We need God to step in because there's a the devil is really dividing nations. The devil understands some of the verses of the Bible. He understands a house divided can't stand. And look at the nations that are being divided. Look at the uh, situations that are happening. I live in America, and uh, listen, we're in a we're in a big mess, but we're in a big mess globally. And the church needs to rise up. And I'm telling you, the Bible's plan is to fill this whole earth with the knowledge of the glory of God. And so in the midst of all this, I don't want you to lose hope. The Bible says in Hebrews 10, 35, don't fling away your steadfast confidence in God, your hope, because your steadfast confidence in God, your hope, brings with it a great recompense of reward. One translation says, hold on to hope. It pays big dividends. So don't get hopeless. The Bible says in the book of Daniel, Pastor, it says, the devil wants to wear out the saints of God. And boy, I'm finding saints get, and the Bible said in the book of Galatians, here it is, let us not grow weary in well-doing. We will reap if we faint not. Well, and I think here in Canada, um, we also have, you know, experienced that where there's this temptation to just kind of be a bit worn out yeah. because of, you know, at least for, for, for churches, it's like, okay, one week, you're allowed to do this. The next week, you're allowed to do that. And there's been a lot of turmoil. And, you know, I think even in the midst of that, it's like God is still breathing on his church. And I see yes. so many great things happening where we, we see people get saved. Um, but, you know, just on the idea of the pan or the, the topic of the pandemic, you know, we uh, this is, uh, you know, the summer of 2022 back in uh, 2019, yes. you you prophesied yes. 
about this pandemic I wrote coming. It just as clear as you can see it, I, I said there's a pandemic coming. It'll be uh, very uh, contagious. It'll be deadly and devastating. And we wrote all about it. Now, uh, the Lord won't do anything without showing the prophets. And uh, I'm telling you, this is a very serious thing. Um, uh, you say, well, uh, and I'm, I'm going to tell you what happened. It was sent. It didn't come. It was sent. And uh, it's a, like a biological warfare. But I'm telling you guys, we've got to focus on the Lord because the devil would, if he could, kill every one of us. The thief comes but for to steal, kill, and to destroy. But Jesus said, I've come that you might have effervescent, overflowing life. And you've got to make up your mind. Are you going to look out and see all the, all the problems and all the circumstances, all the situations? Jesus said, if this were in the Gospel of Luke, men's hearts failing them for the things they see coming up on the earth. And here's what we've got to do, Pastor. We've got to, yes, we look at all the problems. We see that. We don't ignore that. But that's not the force of our focus. We're going to do Isaiah 26.3. Thou will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed upon thee. So we got to lift our vision up to the Lord. The Bible said they look to look to him and their faces were enlightened we got to quit looking at just the bad evening news and all the problems and all the things and start focusing on jesus because he's our help he the bible said the grass withers the flower fades but the word of god will stand and it's a firm foundation he said don't build on the sands the rains will come the storms will happen and the house will disintegrate but build on the solid rock the solid rock of the word of god and that's what i'm challenging you to do Get into the Word of God. Faith comes by what? Hearing and hearing by the Word of God. And the book of Hosea says, My people, the people of God, are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. And the devil's going to do everything he can to keep you out of the Bible because he wants you to be ignorant of his devices. And God said, I would not have you ignorant, brethren, concerning the devil and his plots and his plans. So we need to study. And I use whole body. No, study to show yourself approved unto God, a workman that doesn't have to be afraid, rightly dividing the word of truth. Now, some of you, you don't know me from a, anybody, but I've been, I've been preaching 53 years. I've averaged speaking five times a week for over 50 years. And I'm telling you, uh, God is trying to wake up the church. He's trying to wake up the warriors. And we, we're, you're not watching this broadcast by happenstance. The Bible said all of our days are written in God's book before we've ever lived a single one of them. God has you watching this because he wants to stir your heart. He wants you to awaken and arise and, and put Jesus first in every part of your life. The Bible said, well, I'm talking fast and long, but the Bible said a double-minded person is unstable in all their ways. Now, I'm telling you, dear church, we're going to have to come out and be holy and pure. It's absolutely essential. Psalms says that we need to have clean hands and a pure heart. So uh, looking at the, the pandemics, people want to know, what's, what's going to happen? What's going to happen now? I'll tell you what, uh, we're going to see the body of Christ set ablaze by the power of the Holy Spirit. I mean that. Uh, listen, I want you to know God wants to display His power. Uh, he wants to demonstrate He's who He says He is. And Paul said, I determined. I'm, I'm shouting. Paul, the great apostle, said, I determined not to know anything among you except Jesus Christ and Him crucified. I was with you in weakness and in fear and in much trembling. And my speech and my preaching was not with eloquent words, but He said in a demonstration of God's power. And that's what we need. We need miracles happening. I said, it, the Bible said, and multitudes believed on Jesus when they saw the miracles He did. And that's why I love frontline ministries. They believe in miracles. The Bible's filled with miracles. You, God wants to show you that he is a miracle-working God. Scriptures remind us Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. He does, he, he's the same. And you can read that he does miracles. If he did them then, he'll do them now. But he does them through his anointed people. Yeah, absolutely. Now, a couple of questions that, that I think a lot of people would have as well is, you know, you mentioned about some of the leaders that... Uh, you know, let's say our country, Canada and the United States and and different ones have where, you know, you feel they're not equipped um, to handle, um, you know, some of these things that are happening right now. And so I guess what I would love to know is, has the Lord showed you anything, let's say, for uh, Canada and the United States in terms of just um, 
you know, what may happen or what's possible, but also, okay, what is the church's response to that? All right. Here's what the Lord told me. He said, Bobby, I'm not going to change America from the White House, but the church house. And that's why it's so imperative and important that we do. Uh, if my people, which are called by my name, will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. And I'm telling you, you can't have as many abortions as America's had. That, that, that the blood of the innocent is on our hands. Thank God for overturning Roe versus Wade. But listen, it is so sad. When you see a whole multitude of irate people screaming, let me murder my offspring. And see, all of this is a sin against God. And we can't expect, we cannot expect the great blessings of God to be bestowed upon us uh, at, when we're living in such sin. And we got to come out from among them and be separate. Now, I don't know how deep you want to get into this, but the, it's, a, it's a shame. When pastors will stand up and say, it's okay for a man to marry a man. It's not okay. It's not okay. I'm telling you, if the church doesn't take a stand and stand for truth, who will? The Bible, the Bible says truth has fallen in the streets. we got to rescue truth. Christians, we got to rescue truth so truth can rescue us. And I'm telling you, very important. But uh, I want us to uh, awaken to the fact that we're not trying to be politically correct. We're trying to be biblically accurate. So uh, some of you say, well, Bobby, uh, I, 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 don't know, I don't know how to approach this upright and just take a stand for truth. Don't be wishy-washy. Don't be, don't be what, just compromising. That's, what, that's what's happening sometimes. Even pulpits, they're compromising, trying to win the people. That's not, I'd rather have the approval of God than the approval of men. And that's, if, if I attempt to please men, I will not please God, the Bible said. But uh, like you said, Pastor, we have got to really realize help is on the way. And, and that, uh, I want to get, can I give them a verse? Absolutely. Here's your great verse about help being on the way. Psalms chapter 30, verse 5. It says, God's anger is but for a tiny moment. His favor is for a complete lifetime. And here's what it says. Weeping may last through the night, but joy comes in the morning. And that's what I, I wrote in the shepherd's rod. God is trying to sift us and shake us to get us into the place where we can embrace a greater glory. And God wants us to do that. And uh, I know that you're, you're hungry and you're looking for answers or you wouldn't be watching a, bro a broadcast like this. But I am so thankful that God is stirring hunger, stirring desperation. And some people ask me, what could I do to help uh, change things? Get hungry for God. The Bible said, blessed are those that hunger and thirst after righteousness, they shall be filled. And that we ought, to, we ought to be doing Matthew chapter 6, verse 33. But seeking first the kingdom of God, so all these other things will fall in their proper place. Yeah, and I, I think what you're describing as well is, you know, it says in the Bible that there's, there's kind of these seasons where they call evil good and yeah, good evil. Man. And, yeah. you know, I think, now more than ever, at least in my lifetime, that's been evident where not only is evil tolerated, but it's also celebrated as a good thing. And, and so, you know, I think we're seeing that a lot in our, in our culture and our society right now. And, you know, I think with what you're saying, it's like, okay, we got to just draw near to the Lord. And that's yeah. really, he's going to have those, those answers for us um, as believers. Now, <clears throat> There's a couple other questions that I, I had for you, uh, and and I was gonna gonna ask like prophetically, are you feeling anything about inflation? So in Canada, we're seeing some inflation. Uh, in the states, a little bit of inflation. Some places, like uh, I have a cousin who lives in Argentina. He, I think he told me they have inf like forty percent inflation in a month. Yeah. Like in a month, and it's yeah. just out of control in different areas and. You know, part of me wonders, okay, like, Lord, where is this going, let's say, in Canada and the United States? Yeah. Have you heard anything from the Lord about that? Yeah. The Bible said, where a man's treasure is, there will his heart be also. And I'm telling you, uh, when, when things begin to really change with people's finances, it gets their attention. 
You know, uh, uh, and I'm telling you, God, God is going to allow things to shake up to get us to the place where we realize we have got to depend upon God. Not what if what is a man profited if he gained the whole world and lose his own soul or what would a man give in exchange for his soul? Listen, uh, money is important. We understand that. But uh, don't let that stand in the way of you obeying God. Do you see what I'm saying? Uh, listen, uh, money could be gone just like that. But I'm telling you, God is steadfast and stable. The grass withers, the flower fades, but word of, the word of God stands forever. But uh, uh, I'm telling you, we better pray. But, and there's some verses that said, you're the head, not the tail, above only and not beneath. There's verses that say that it, God said, I wish above all things that you would prosper and be in health. And here's one of the ways to guarantee prosperity if you want it. Joshua 1.8, the words of this law shall not depart from your eyes. You shall meditate upon it day and night, and it will guarantee you overwhelming success. That's a major verse. Now, I don't want anybody to be a flop and a failure because they're not obeying God. I'm telling you, God's plans for you and I are bigger and better than you and I could ever initiate for ourselves. That's what it says, Jeremiah 29, 11. I know my thoughts. I think towards you, declares the Lord. Thoughts are of your success, not your failure. My intention is to bring you to a good end not a dismal demise. God says your future is filled with bright hope. Now, I'm hanging on to that, don't you think? And I'm not, going to cast, I'm not going to let the circumstances and the situations of the world rob me of my joy. The joy of the Lord is our strength. A merry heart will do good like a medicine. So uh, hold on and pray because we've got to pray that the Lord of the harvest will thrust forth and, and win the, we've got to get Busy winning souls. That's what we got to do. We've got to redeem the time, make full use of every moment, and we've got to focus on the most important thing, and that's living a holy, upright Christian life. Now, you also mentioned to me um, a, vi a vision, or I don't know how it was, um, if it was a vision or something, but you, about the hundred dollar bill. Yeah. Would well, you be willing to share I will, that? I will. Uh, I was waiting before the Lord, and the Lord said to me, Bobby. I'm going to show you chaos and pandemic, pandemic, uh, pandemic, what, not pandemic, what do you call it? Pandemonium. Yeah, pandemonium, that's it. I'm going to show you a chaos and pandemonium like you've never seen before. I thought, okay. And uh, now this was a way back there. This was before the United States changed their money into having the big uh, $100 bill. But a guy walked up to a bank teller with that new $100 bill, which didn't exist when I got this vision, and held it up to a bank uh, teller. And here's what the bank teller said. Sir, I'm sorry. That currency is no longer honored here. And the whole world went wild. And I thought, well, that couldn't be real because uh, they, that's not how the money is. You should have felt how I felt when I saw our first big $100 bill. I thought, oh, no, this is what the currency I saw when the teller said, I'm sorry, sir. That currency is no longer honored here. But I, I, and so that's what the Lord said. And I'm praying that God will have mercy on us. And uh, uh, I, I want to tell you something, uh, just to be quite honest, as wicked as the people have been in our nations, it's a miracle that God is still gracious. Uh, but uh, I, I want to share with you right now my favorite verse in the whole Bible, Nahum chapter 1, verse 7. It says this, God is good, a stronghold in the day of trouble, and he knows those that are trusting him. I am so thankful, Pastor Johnny, that it didn't say God was good or it's going to be good. It says God is good. Right in the middle of our mess, we got a good, good God. You know, uh, yeah, I love that verse. And, uh, and I love, you know, when you share it because it's, it's so, um, so true um, to, to all of us. Now, uh, one question I had is, you know, I was thinking this week about the Shunammite woman, you know, in 2 Kings 8, where, um, you know, she kind of is positioned by the prophetic uh, to miss the famine and to receive the promise. And, you know, I think, um, I guess what I would ask you is for Christians that are saying, Lord, I want to be right in the center of what you've called for, you know, me to do. And I want to be right in the middle of it. How do I position myself yeah. uh, to make sure I don't miss anything? What would, what would you say to that? Okay. Uh, 
my advice to any of us and all of us that want to be successful is swift and complete obedience. Do as quickly as you can, as thoroughly as you can, anything and everything God asks you to do. Now, you're a believer. Inside of you rests the Holy Spirit, and he can guide you. Nehemiah 920, it says, he gave his good spirit to instruct us and didn't withhold his manner from our mouth. And if you'll follow him, you'll be in the right place for the right reason. And that's wonderful. And that's what I think happened. I think that uh, we need to position ourselves to be in the right place at the right time, uh, like Esther, Esther of old. And uh, she ended up and God used her to preserve the Jewish nation. Isn't it amazing? Yeah. Wow. Yeah, that's that's powerful. And uh Okay, well, Bobby, just thank you so much for taking some time. I know we have our conference yes. tonight, yeah. uh, and you're going to be speaking, Good. and we just have been so blessed by you. I guess just as, as we close today, I was wondering if you just had any just last thoughts for those that are watching, and maybe if you wouldn't mind just praying over us. I will. The Bible said, let us not grow weary in well-doing. We will reap if we faint not. And I pray right now in the mar marvelous, matchless name of Jesus, you will endue us with power, that you will make us strong and bold, and we'll be as bold as a lion. I pray right now for those that are sick, those that need healing, I release healing. Lord Jesus, you are the healer, and I pray you'll touch them, raise them up, and I pray that they'll be ever made ever withhold by the blood of Jesus. You said by your stripes we are healed. But Lord, I pray right now. I pray for those that are discouraged, they're downtrodden. I pray that you would become their strength. And you said the joy of the Lord. So I pray over them right now. Psalms uh, 1611. You will show me the pathway of life. In your presence is fullness of joy. At your right hand, there's pleasures forevermore. And I pray that you will show us how to walk in union and harmony with you. In Jesus' name, amen. All right. Well, thank you so much, Bobby. And thanks for everyone uh, that's watching. God bless you. Thank you.